In today's video, we try and survive 100 days in hardcore better Minecraft mod pack. Now, this mod pack transforms peaceful vanilla Minecraft into a world full of danger, exploration, and challenge. That danger comes from these terrifying bosses, but of course, with that great danger comes great rewards. Now, these bosses are not easy to find, so while searching, you'll have to battle your way through pirate ships, elaborate towers, actual spaceships, and much, much more. Now, to help out with all this adventuring, I will definitely need to get myself a trusty companion like one of these dragons. Lastly, in this amazing world, we have some new dimensions to explore alongside crazy improvements to old ones like end fortresses. What's that? You'll see later. Now, if somehow all of this still doesn't pique your interest, according to these people, I'm actually pretty funny, so get comfy, grab some food and water, because this one's gonna be a long one. Alrighty, here we are in our new world, and hey, look at this little guy. Oh, he's, he's so cute. Alright, enough of that. Let's grab some wood, make ourselves a nice axe here. While chopping with the axe, I learned how to use the tree vein miner, which is going to make getting wood easier than your local street worker. Uh, if you don't get that, well, you'll get it when you're older, I promise. Anyways, after getting a sufficient supply of wood, I made myself a wood pick and, of course, threw it away the second I mined three cobblestone. Does anyone actually use these wood picks to their entirety? Because, like, I know when I was younger, I used to use these, you know, until they broke, but, like, now I just don't care, and I don't even care to use them in, like, a furnace for early game, you know, fuel, which I probably should because that's, like, ultimate efficiency once i had the coal vein mined i decided to pick up enough cobblestone so i'd be able to make more tools in a furnace then while exploring i found this funky little slab fish and decided to see what he drops he should drop well he does drop disappointment actually not he should he does he's disappointing and this is why no one likes him and now time for some more coal mining soon after the coal mining i found these woolly cows which kind of look like they should probably shop at Hot Topic and date a Discord mod and, you know, be like a uwu kitten and stuff or, you know, I don't know. And maybe tell their parents every night that they just don't understand their new lifestyle and, and they totally want to wear like this spike collar around their neck 24-7 because that's just like their new style and like it's not just a phase. I, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, I, we, we all know these people, right? In all seriousness, though, these cows were the holy grail of passive mobs. They dropped raw beef, wool, and leather. What else could you ask from a passive mob? You get the raw beef for food, which is like the best best food in the game outside of like golden carrots and stuff you get the wool for making beds and a bunch of other things and then you get the leather for books and enchanting after the edgy cows i scaled up the mountain and found this mysterious looking gatekeeper guy who had some cool looking trades now i found his house and started making myself at home i made sure to help myself to the complimentary bacon in the backyard and the flooring of the home because as the saying goes What's mine is yours, and I'm just gonna pretend he told me that before I walked in. Because honestly, this guy was just kind of creepy. Didn't really say much, but you know, I'm, I'm sure he, I'm sure he doesn't mind. Now I noticed a broken ladder in the corner of the room and found a weird-looking portal with some cool moonstones. No clue what these did at this point, but you better believe I'm taking them because they look cool. And finally, after a long day of exploring, it was time for bed. Day two began with me starting to explore the basin that I was right next to. Now there's actually a village right next to the basin, which I decided I would explore a little bit later but before i did that i did want to do a little bit of mining because if we were going to start adventuring i was going to need some better weapons and armor i dug straight into one of the mountains and found a little bit of coal and three separate veins of iron now after the brief mining i went to explore the village honestly nothing too crazy here outside of a waystone marker and a bunch of pumpkins i did at least find a chest with some potatoes in it so now i could at least plant a renewable food source to start the next three days i smelted the iron and made myself a shield alongside a pickaxe axe and bucket then i went back to the village stole some books and found some emeralds in a chest then this little guy was asking for some food and i decided to give him some because i mean he's honestly so cute man look at him but he kept asking for more and there's no way i wasn't giving him any more like i'm not rich bro i'm sorry i just started but towards the end of the day i found a ruined portal and grabbed myself the gold block and then spent the night inside this dirt hut i found which was kind of cool even though like it's just dirt the next morning i found the chest at the portal and got myself some snazzy gold gear that in all honesty i would probably never use now inside a forest i faced my first hostile mobs of the video which like I don't think about it, it kind of took a while, surprisingly. I will say, I do love how the witches in this mod pack have massive hats. Like they, if you watch Star Wars, they remind me of Cad Bane's hat. Uh, shout out if you like Star Wars, Star Wars is sick, but uh, 
What I don't love is the fact that this bouldering zombie almost one-shot me. Like, dude, someone check this guy for steroids or something, because that should not be legal. Like, this is too early on to be almost getting one-shot in a random forest. I did find a little hut inside the forest and heard illagers inside, but thought maybe they would just be friendly, and, well, shocker, I was wrong. Apparently, I had stumbled on some, like, hunter's cabin and was clearly not welcome here, so I took care of him, and after getting myself comfortable in yet another stranger's house, I found some pretty great loot in the chest, most of it being food, which, in all honesty, was like one of the best things you can get early on I feel like once out of that forest I found yet another village and while exploring a big old bird decided it wanted to pick a fight with me pro tip in life don't fight a guy with an axe if you don't have an axe yourself. Uh, even then, I just stay away from the guy with the axe. That's I don't, It's kind of weird unless you're chopping trees with the guy. I don't know. Just It's just my pro tip. Then it was, of course, time to loot the village. And while looting, I found some work villager clothing. And let me tell you, this hat is the greatest thing ever put in a mod pack. Like, just look at the level of schnazziness that is on your screen right now. Look at me. I, if this doesn't want to make you subscribe, I don't, I don't think I'll ever get you to subscribe. Anyways, I should probably move on with the video here. The next thing I found was a rainbow sheep, which presented a bit of a dilemma for myself. Do I A, kill the sheep to see what color wool I get? Is there rainbow wool or is it just like a one in six chance or however many colors are in the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. People count magenta? I don't know. Or B, leave the sheep alone because, well, it seems kind of rare. I mean, when was the last time you saw a rainbow sheep? I decided to go with B and let me know if I made the right choice here because I, I still don't know to this point. Like, part of me still wants to know what kind of wool that guy drops. However, right next to the village, there was what seemed like a villager camp site, which ended up having a cracked out blacksmith. I was able to get nearly full iron armor, a fresh anvil, an enchanted iron helmet, and a bunch of other good loot. And I just honestly love the idea that these people are watching me take every single piece of valuable that they have and then i even go as far as to use their own furnace and coal to smelt the iron i just stole i also found another full anvil hiding so i figured might as well take that and even the tents outside had some pretty stacked chests like this place was honestly better than everywhere i had explored combined to this point which is pretty surprising just like looking at the outside but you just wait because the dungeons later make this seem like nothing and i i promise i did spot a tower from the village encampment and decided we needed to explore this thing now the first room was a skeleton spawner and if this is how this dungeon was going to be formatted my strategy was going to be just to focus on breaking the spawner as soon as possible now the first chest i found had an aether dragon egg in it which i knew was really important because like i said in the intro i wanted one of these guys to fly around and they just make everything better i'm pretty sure they can fight alongside you too so needless to say this was a great find at this point i was then introduced to enchanted spiders on the next floor which should be illegal and i was even taken down pretty low in hearts which was pretty alarming because i knew this was one of the easier dungeons in the whole mod pack now the next floor was actually somewhat difficult because it had a vex spawner which in this video becomes the bane of my existence like i'm going to tell you right now we find quite a few of these towers in this and these things almost kill me i swear to you like 20 times and it just drives me crazy crazy because they phase through walls and they just oh my god and their sounds they make just drive me crazy but the chest on this level wasn't too bad i did want to collect as many music discs as possible in this video just kind of as like a little like self-given side quest because I, I just feel like it'd be satisfying and there was also a buried treasure map in another chest which sounded pretty exciting now when i finally got to the top of the tower i saw there was a bunch of golden blocks which i was gonna have to earn because there were two vexes that would not leave me alone and like i said earlier these things hurt now eventually I was able to kill him and I took my gold and waste on point and just moved on with life. On day 6 I found an area that I decided I wanted to put my base at. Now around me there was another tower and another one of those hunting cabins. Now it was time to clear all the grass and while doing so I got some of these fancy gems from these cool looking plants that can be very useful in the future. Then came the beginning of the base which really just ended up as the start of an outline. I wasn't going to keep it wood forever but for now it works. And on the morning of day 7 I had finished the outline then it was time to flatten up the area which meant a lot of digging once i was done digging i figured i should go and say hello to my neighbors but nobody seemed to be home so i just went upstairs and found myself a gapple and a boomerang from the chest alongside some other things such as food and iron now i went to play with the boomerang but lost it on my first throw all right let's try again yeah nope still not doing the whole you know boomerang thing that's uh, not very good i did however eventually find my neighbor and tried out the boomerang and once again this thing just didn't work apparently i'm just not worthy of using a boomerang i don't know day eight started with an explosive meeting with a creeper 
Yeah, that's a bad pun. If you're new here, I'm good for one of those every video, so you're welcome. Explosive meeting with a creeper. Check that off. That's, yeah, terrible pun. I love it. Let's move on. After that terrible pun, I almost got my ass kicked by this enderman and i will say i do really like how you still take damage with shields in this mod pack because it just adds a little bit extra difficulty to every fight which just makes the game a little more fun what's even cooler is the fact that you can upgrade your shield which makes the percentage of damage blocked even higher and higher with each upgrade so it gives you more incentive other than just building the lame looking iron shield my plan at this point was to make myself a bit of a mining hut and for that hut i decided i wanted to use dark oak and since i had no dark oak trees i decided my former neighbor's house would work for for my supply and when i was cutting it i made sure to keep the side facing my house intact just so it looked normal for my base looked nice and pretty and then on the back side it's, it looks terrible to me it's kind of like when you know someone looks pretty good with a mask on and then you take the mask off or they take the mask off or you know i'm definitely not talking about myself here but the mask comes off and it's just they don't look as good uh yeah that's that's relatable um unfortunately check itself was gonna be pretty simple overall but by day nine my simple little hut was actually looking pretty good good once i had the structure itself made it was time to actually dig the staircase down while mining i heard this little guy walk up behind me and he has absolutely insane trades which I definitely wanted to take part in so I locked him in a little square like the good pet owner I am and while I continued to mine the staircase down I found some iron which I was pretty excited about because I wanted to take advantage of this goblin trader but unfortunately I was gonna need silk touch in order to make this trade because of the new updated ores then I fell straight into an amethyst deposit which was being guarded by a skeleton I was debating on whether or not I wanted to mine the amethyst and well let's just say I decided to pick up a little bit how much is a little bit you ask well, I ended up mining purely amethyst for five straight minutes, which if you did not know equates to a lot of it. Yeah, so we have plenty of this now. The next three days were all spent mining, and since I have so much to go over in this video, I'm kind of going to give you a quick recap here. We, of course, mined all sorts of ores, found another amethyst deposit, which had a forgotten adventure and a terrifying cave centipede. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, nothing in this world needs to have that many legs. Like, ugh. Now, give me the heebie-jeebies. After that, I found the first vein of diamonds, made a diamond pickaxe, mined some obsidian for another portal and enchanting table, and while digging down, accidentally made my way into another dimension. Don't ask me how I managed that, but uh, this was the deeper dark dimension, which was home to the warden, which we were definitely not ready to fight at this point. This dimension change does create a visual bug with my XP, but it does fix itself later on. And by the way, we will be taking out this warden later, so we will be back here. At one point, I got myself into a bit of a pickle because I got surrounded by a variety of vanilla mobs. I just downed a golden apple just to be safe and left while my life was still intact because I really liked this seed at this point and did not want to lose it. So yeah, I was just happy to be alive here. The next day I made myself an enchanting table and decided to do a little bit of exploring to hopefully find some sugar cane. I saw this little staircase in the open, which I of course had to explore and it was actually an underground village, which was really cool. Like in terms of loot, there wasn't really a whole lot for me to find, but after leaving the village, I did find a pretty Pretty big pirate ship which also happened to be right next to some sugarcane. All of those ships don't look all that deadly, they're actually really dangerous, so I decided I would come back later when I was better prepared. When I got back home, I decided it was time to go clear this tower and while parkouring on some trees, I found some mysterious eggs. Now the first floor had a skeleboner on it and the chest inside had a new music disc alongside another aether dragon egg. I sniped the next spawner and got a similar chest to the last one and this third floor actually had multiple skellies and one even had like a cult hold on which was kind of kind of sketch but you know that's fine the chest had yet another aether dragon egg and while that may seem kind of lame to you you can actually hatch these in different conditions to change the type of dragon that comes out so getting any kind of dragon egg really works you just got to know how to hatch them uh the common theme to these early towers is basically break the spawner as quickly as possible and in all honesty these early game towers really aren't all that crazy but like i said those later game structures those do get wild now in the last two chests i did get a fresh iron sword an enchanted book with wither got on it another map and some other goodies lastly i got a bunch more gold blocks and a singular waystone from the top of the tower the next morning i brought some cows into a simple little cow pen then placed the aether dragon egg in what was probably far too small of a pen area day 16 i went to collect some fish for my soon to hatch dragon and then i realized this guy had hatched and didn't know how to swim 
Like he was just sitting there drowning. I genuinely thought he was a goner, but once I was far enough away from him, he decided to teleport to me. So, you know, that was nice. I made sure to give him some meat so he could heal up and speed up the growing process. And before I left this time, I made sure that he was sitting down so he wouldn't quite literally swim with the fishes. And that was about it for these four days. Day 17, it was back to mining. And while lining up a cave, I noticed some cobblestone above me. When I got in the room, I learned that it was some sort of underground mini dungeon with a ton of spawners. After lighting up all the spawners, I grabbed some cave roots and tamed this giant tortoise and named him Terrence. Why Terrence? Well, Terrence the tortoise just sounds real nice. So yeah, Terrence is going to vibe with us for a little bit. I thought I had the spawners on lock, but while I was mining out of nowhere, both these spawners basically exploded and pumped out a ton of mobs. Now these mobs actually cornered me and if it wasn't for the shield, I would have died like instantly. Luckily, I finished off all the mobs and once they were finally all dead, I decided to use the waystone to get myself home. Now I did go back to the cave and kept trying to get Terrence into a boat, but this guy just didn't want to get in, which made me sad. Eventually, I just started to try and push the guy all the way through the mines, but then I realized he was three blocks wide, bro. Three blocks wide. So it would have taken days because I would have had to mine him like all the way back. And to make the situation even worse, I accidentally took the redstone off Terrence's back, which made him look naked. And at this point, I was embarrassed, he was embarrassed, and I felt bad and it, it was just awkward between us so you know i just went back to mining and i did find another vein of diamonds but decided to just leave it so i could come back later with fortune on a pickaxe and by the end of the trip this is what our mining hall was looking like the very last thing i accomplished in this set of days was replacing the wood outline of the base with deep slate bricks day 20 our dragon looked full size so i hopped right on and i mean i just felt like a god man oh nice voice crack wow yeah i felt like a god i'm gonna leave that voice crack too because i'm so cool but like just look Look at me. Now I do need to name this dragon, so for now we're just gonna call him Drake. But if you want to see 200 days, I will change his name to the top commented name. But for now, he's he's Drake, all right? I parked Drake outside yet another one of these towers and went on to clear it. Fighting the Vexes was actually really hard this time, and I almost ended up dying here multiple times. While looting the chests they were protecting, I noticed that one of them dropped a dagger. Day 21, I finally fixed my shaders so they weren't so blinding. Hopped on Drake, and it was time to do some more exploring. One thing about this mod pack is the fact that these villages are everywhere. Because of this, I didn't spend much time in each village, because there wasn't a whole lot more they could provide me. While flying, I did spot a new structure in the distance, and once I landed, I realized it was a pillager outpost. And holy bro, relax. God, it's not that serious. After dealing with those friendly welcomes, I found a wandering trader and helped myself to his leads. I also figured I might as well kill him, and he actually dropped some good loot. I got this fancy quill and a wandering bag, which gave me a variety of items, including diamonds. But the best part was the fact that it was like a mini inventory, or I guess a, a backpack would be a better way to describe it. So now I could store more loot, which is really nice in this mod pack once it was nighttime it was time to head away from this place for now because we again just weren't ready i mean that thing illagers do not mess around like that's for sure like if you look back at our first fight with them that guy did half my health in one hit i cleared yet another one of these towers and decided to try and find some buried treasure and while searching i ended up in quite a predicament here and if it weren't for this massive mosh pit of them fighting each other there's actually no way i would have survived this this water here too also you know was really clutch because uh these zombies were just wanted to munch on me really bad after that i walked into a room full of skeletons and was once again saved by the fact that these guys just could not get along that whole fight i was honestly just shitting my pants trying not to lose everything loot wise i got a bunch of different music discs and another dragon egg so not too bad once that was finished it was time to sort some loot followed by expanding the sugar cane farm and finally on day 25 i got an outdoor enchanting area set up i mean yeah it's scuffed and yeah i still live outside next to a bunch of boxes like a homeless person but you just wait i made a fresh pickaxe and enchanted it with fortune 2 and since minecraft hates us it came with nothing else not unbreaking not efficiency nothing after that i burnt a ton of levels trying to get a decent enchant for my sword but was never able to get that okay unlike the last mining trip i'm actually gonna condense this one because looking back at the script i kind of failed there and you know the whole condensing process so most importantly i mined the old diamonds with the fortune 2 pickaxe which ended up giving me a total of 22 at this point i realized how good fortune is with the new updates to the ore and lastly found some more diamonds after mining out a copper vein which i normally skip which really makes you think about how many diamonds you just walk right past probably disgusting the next three days began with me making full diamond gear and of course admiring how snazzy we were looking the next morning we got protection for on a chest plate which 
which was exactly what I was looking for. I also ended up enchanting a brand new diamond pickaxe and got fortune three on this one. Later that day, I got rid of the edgy cows with my nice sword followed by another one of these towers there's so many of these things i'm not gonna go deep into them anymore day 29 however did have a massive surprise for me now it's not the kind your girlfriend expects on valentine's day because let's be honest man you're not packing that i'm not packing that i'm not gonna lie no the massive thing i'm talking about here is the giant floating castle dungeon thingy honestly it was terrifying and while scouting it i realized that there were skeletons riding flaming phantoms and when i finally decided to land i got knocked straight off and nearly died and at this point i had no clue where drake flew off to like i don't know if he just went to off with some other dragons or what but i couldn't find him and luckily i had this waystone in my inventory because if i hadn't i would have been stranded up here which uh wouldn't have been fun but worst news of all was the fact that I had lost Drake and at this point I really wasn't sure if he was dead or if he just was getting some getting some mad ladies like he might have been I don't know he might have been a player who am I to judge right needless to say I was sad that I had already lost my first dragon day 30 I mined deep slate for the oh voice crack wow I just turned 12 I'm gonna leave that too so you guys hear me wow oh my god yeah I'm 12 sorry uh day 30 like I'm, I'm gonna try this again I mined deep slate for the build and then built up the walls with all that new deep slate and bro dude these bricks are the definition of snazzy like i don't know they're just too good i needed sandstone for the build so the next day i went out and mined a bunch of sand then spent the rest of the day trying to figure out a window design this right here isn't the final product but it was a start to the design and would influence the future final design i did really like the idea of like adding onto the walls to the outside so that's definitely going to stay similar to the money in my bank account. I completely ran out of sandstone, which meant I was back mining actual sandstone. But this kind of hurt my soul because I was using my fortune three pick because it had efficiency on it. And this durability just went away really quick. The day after my new aether dragon was almost full grown, but couldn't wear a saddle and did not have a name yet. After checking on my nameless dragon, I was just back grinding on the house like I was a teenage carpenter. If you get that, I come on like that's that's pretty clever. Day 34, I woke up and smacked this big hatted bitch for waking me up too early. Then it was back to working on the house. I needed a bunch of wood, so I, uh, I'm gonna name him Derpy. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, I took Derpy the dragon, flew over to some massive spruce trees, and got some juicy wood. You know what? Get, get your mind out of the gutter, okay? Wood can be juicy and not be that kind of wood. Anyways, the next day, I was working on the storage room and decided to run with barrels this time, and then threw in an assortment of other useful tables and cookers. Day 36 was basically just me moving all the loot from my old chest to the storage room, which is always one of my least favorite days, but it has to be done. It was finally on day 38 that I got to do my best impression of a person professional arson by burning all the duplicate music discs sometimes i wish this happened to actual music too like i'm not trying to name any names but cardi b oh man oh geez that one uh that one slipped out didn't it yeah no i uh, totally love music that talks about waps and stuff you know how could i not totally awesome you know outside of that though the main thing that was achieved was making a full auto smelter room with both blast furnaces and normal furnaces day 40 i cleared yet another one of these towers and when i got home it was flooring time i went with a really simple dark oak flooring but had the direction of the wood alternating which actually made the floors like a lot more interesting and honestly looked pretty nice now while i was putting in the flooring this little midget wouldn't leave me alone so i finally just got to the point where i had to do this am i a terrible person Maybe. Am I a couple of apples richer? Most definitely. Then literally all of day 41 was working on the staircase up to the second floor. Days 42 through 48 were all spent in the nether and as always with this mod pack the nether was absolutely beautiful. Right next to spawn I found a little gang of striders and they were just all hanging out in a, you know, in the trap house. There was even a strider spawner in here, which made it like more of a party every couple seconds. I then found out that they were nether goblin traders, which had some really nice trades, like getting bonus nether scrap and even being able to get a totem of undying. After that, I made sure to pick up some glowstone because there are some awesome blocks you can make with glowstone in this mod pack. And I was definitely going to be using them while exploring. I saw some white stuff flowing into the lava that honestly kind of looked like cement. Yeah cement you know not not seamen you know not, not the guys that ride boats across the seas and you know fish and stuff not no no cement anyways i played some baseball with the neighborhood ghast and ended up kind of killing him he just he can't take my smoke then i made my way over to this awesome looking nether town and this place is just amazing like it was huge 
decorative and overall just really fun to explore. This place was so cool, it had a full on enchanting room inside, which I of course helped myself to their books because I made free books are always nice. Right next to the cool town was a bastion which I figured I might as well explore. These things always terrify me because piglin brutes have absolutely no chill whatsoever and will just flat out murder you in like four hits. And then there's these chonky boys, which fortunately this guy wasn't too bright. But unfortunately, a whole squad of them came and tried to kill me, which was not a good time. And eventually, I did find a chest, which was honestly more disappointing than failing a test that you thought you were ready for. Like, you study all week, you actually pay attention in class for once. And then, this always happens in math, too. You go, you take the test. This happened to me my freshman year of college. I took the test, literally thought I ripped a 95% minimum on it, and I got a C-. minus. Hopefully, I'm not alone in that, or I guess hopefully I am, because if I am, that means it's not happening to you people, which would be good for you. Later on, I was able to find these cool rubies while mining. I think it's, it was like a slightly worse diamond, so it wasn't super useful, but like... It's always cool to find new blocks. Now, I will say this nether had a bunch of random structures like this hut looking thing, which made exploring just way more fun. And what ended up being one of the coolest things was this like wither memorial place or something. I couldn't even figure out what exactly it was meant for, but it kind of felt like a ritual site for the wither, which spooked me a bit. I found another Strider house and stole all their music discs because they really don't seem like the music type. I mean, just look at his face, you know, jeez. I will say this nether looks like super menacing, which makes it so much cooler it's supposed to be this scary dangerous place and like in vanilla it's kind of like like a walk in the park like the, your your biggest fear is falling in lava and like in this one there's actually like cool stuff so finally by day 47 and 48 i was at the nether fortress farming up some blaze rods first thing i did when i got back was sorting through all the nether loot and lastly decided to combine two spicy diamond pickaxes to make one nice and snazzy one then it was time to just mine a bunch of deep slate and i basically just mined out like a huge chunk and actually found quite a few veins of diamonds which was a nice bonus to all the deep slate i was getting the next three days were all spent working on this glorious house specifically the upstairs portion the floors i'm putting in right here are for what will eventually be the trophy room for all those boss drops you will get within the next 50 days that's what you're here for i promise it is coming now the next day it was time to set up the walls on the other side of the base this was one of my more unique base designs that i'd never really like done before and needless to say i loved it and you'll see why because it ends up turning out like awesome then i just had to finalize the enchanting room and then this expansion was officially done now at this point i felt i had done a ton of building and i wanted to head into a whole different dimension that being the deeper dark dimension which was home to the warden now one thing that was super awesome about this dimension was the fact that you mined really fast now i did find diamonds but was sad to learn that fortune did not work in this dimension nor did you get xp for mining stuff so overall the the faster mining speed balances it out which is understandable now while mining i did run into a big open cave and was a little scared because I saw these weird looking zombies and I was about to just jump down to explore the cave but while bridging over the cave I noticed multiple wardens just hanging out and I knew right then and there that if I jumped down I was a dead waffle. I ended up using the safe spot area to take out a warden and all of his zombie buddies. Now before I'm called out for being a put for killing the thing like this hear me out okay i tested finding the warden in a separate world before i even started this 100 days and in the test i had full diamond gear and i was one shot by the thing before i even got a hit so needless to say there was absolutely no chance i was gonna risk it here hence my big brain found a way to kill the thing without him being able to touch me i hopped down to pick up the loot and frantically box myself in because i knew there were more of these chunky boys and i did not want to die watching these guys running around i swear they're on like 46 pounds of adderall or something because they cannot chill the f*** out. Eventually, I got one of these guys in my trap and just started abusing his Squidward looking at Loot-wise, I got some more of his horns and two of his music discs total. So nothing crazy, actually, from the warden, which was kind of disappointing, but it would look cool in the trophy room. So, it wasn't all too bad. Day 55 was really just me mining a bunch of sand for the house. Then, I spent the next seven whole days working on the house again, which started off with adding all the sandstone to the outside of the build. Day 60, I was working on adjusting all the windows. And, as you can see in the top right, I did get rated the day 
prior, but of course I was not recording that day. Uh, pretty easy raid. Then by day 61, I needed more deep slate to expand the house. So I went and mined more of that, then used it to build up the walls of the house so we could eventually put a roof on this. Then finally on day 62, the roof was going in, which meant the exterior of the house was almost done after all this time. If you're here for the adventuring and bossing, like I said before, it's coming soon. Just be patient here. But here's what the base was looking like at this point. All that was really left was replacing all of these torches with nicer looking lighting and of course spicing up existing rooms and once I get all that done this build will be on a whole nother level. Day 63 through 66, it was time to get ourselves some netherite. Now, my first task was to dig down to the ancient debris level, and then this happened. Yeah, so I paused to try and get my game plan because this was not how I wanted to go. Once I unpaused, I rushed to get the gapples in my inventory into my hotbar so I could have a chance to survive. At first, I was going to try and swim to the closest piece of land, but quickly realized that this was not an option. Yeah, I was like in the middle of an ocean here, and at this point, I was starting to burn more than Usher in 2004. Anyways, back to trying not to die. Now, since I had no way of swimming out of the lava on time i swam straight down praying that this lava lake was not like the mariana trench and luckily it wasn't i was able to find the bottom and build my way out with only two golden apples left I finally made my way down to the proper level after almost dying and decided I should probably sleep real quick. Hmm, who would have thought sleeping in the nether was a no-no? I kept on doing this over and over and ended up finding a grand total of zero ancient debris while using the bed mining tactic, but at least it was fun though. And now it was time to aimlessly mine. Now I eventually found myself in a nether mine shaft, which was honestly pretty cool. Overall, I didn't really have anything and after a whole lot of mining, I ran into a nether goblin and cashed out for some extra nether right scraps at this point i had 10 and was fairly certain i had some at home so after mining i went back to see how many blocks of netherrack i had mined and it was already over 17,000. so yeah combining those pickaxes was a big deal earlier because otherwise this pick would have broke a while ago without that mending on it day 66 i used all the netherite scraps to make three netherite ingots then it was time to decide what type of upgraded netherite i wanted to go with some gave you water breathing some made you immune to wither effects and a bunch of other cool things i ended up making both a blazerite ingot and a golderite ingot then it was time to upgrade the netherite pickaxe with the golderite ingot the effect this had was increasing the fortune on it by one level which meant we now had fortune four and a pickaxe so we were about to be rich rich day 67 i started off by making a bunch of golden apples because after the nether scare earlier i wanted to be prepared for anything at first my plan was to test out this new pickaxe mining but then found this big ass dude and needless to say i wanted to kill this guy if and this was a big if i was able to kill him i would not only get his helmet but also his giant axe the rest of day 67 was me prepping all my gear for this fight because i had no clue how strong he was gonna be then finally on day 68 it was time to kill this guy so i popped a golden apple like a rapper pops pills and started this fight when i first started swinging on him he would just deflect all my attacks and mr grumpy pants here then introduced me to his earth bending abilities which was i mean honestly it's pretty cool i can't lie and each one of these big strikes dealt over 10% durability to my shield, which meant I could not have this fight lasting too long, otherwise I would be a complete goner. I did eventually figure out that I had to hit the sword stabbed in his back to damage him, and thanks to our beastly sword, all it was going to take was about 3-4 to four hits to kill him. But once again, if this guy manages to hit me, I may very well get one shot here. So eventually, I got the third shot on the big boy, and he was down to only half a heart here. And like, as you can see right here, bro tried to full-on wombo combo me, which was pretty snazzy of him. Like, he's got the cool axe, and he's got these wombo combos, so the guy's snazzy, I can't lie, and he went for one final big swing, and I dodged it, and then took him down, and just like that, he dropped me a rot helm and the axe of a thousand metals, which sounds sick. Now, the helmet and axe both had unlimited durability, and better yet, the axe allowed me to do super cool earthbender slam. On my way home, I tested the axe on some innocent passerbys, but like, honestly, nobody likes wandering traders anyway, and the rest of day 68 was really just setting up what was gonna be a cool little carrot farm i know that sounds weird but i had a nice little plan and this is what it looked like by the day of n69 <laughs> 
Yeah, 69, super cool number. For the next two days, my goal was to find a desert and farm some ender eyes. Once I finally reached the desert, I found a massive fossil that was honestly kind of scary because like if this mob exists here that i do not want to meet it i will say the inside of the fossil was really cool because it was like indiana jones where there was a bunch of emeralds in there and i had to kill zombies to not die granted the zombies were kind of weak but emeralds are cool i mean there's enough to make a villager do some unsavory things but day 72 it was finally time to set off on our journey to the end so we can kill this ender dragon and pick up the elytra alongside exploring the cool new end dimension on the journey i only broke one ender eye now this was not your average stronghold because this one actually felt like a full-on fortress underground unlike the original one like right here you see me raiding a storage room which gave me some extra food then i just had to keep exploring all these hallways which was a bit scary because like i had no clue what this fortress just had in store for me i didn't know if there was new mobs i didn't know if there was just gonna be a creeper meet and greet that i was gonna walk into and just explode i mean i had no clue at this point eventually i did stumble into the portal room and quickly broke the spawner now of course with my luck the portal had a whopping zero eyes of ender in it so now i was one short i put my 11 in popped down a waystone went home made an eye of ender then decided to shoot this cool cinematic because well i mean it was time to deal with some intense dragon killing As always, everything started off with sniping the explodey crystals. Then once again, as always, an enderman got pissed off at me for accidentally looking at him, which eventually led me to eating a golden apple because now there was three of them. Once all the crystals were down, I started sniping, and I mean, I was basically using a marshmallow gun here because my bow just dealt no damage to him. I will say this mod pack does give the dragon significantly more health than the vanilla version, so it even makes my sword look pretty weak here. When in reality, I mean, it's decent. I spotted some new ore and figured now, was as good a time as any to mine it even though you know like a massive dragon was kind of trying to kill me at the moment while jamming my sword into the face of the dragon it just flat out went invisible on me which like threw me off a little bit and i mean can you imagine if the ender dragon could actually go invisible like this fight would take so much longer because you wouldn't be able to bow it down at all granted in this fight i ran out of arrows so i really couldn't even bow it down that much myself so while i waited for it to land i decided the best way to kill time would be to bully the enderman into giving me their pearl then the bad breath dragon finally landed for the last time and i went to try and catch all the xp over the portal so it didn't just teleport to the overworld but the game had other things in mind The next day, I found myself exploring this expanded end dimension where I, in the most literal sense, was jumped by a bunch of slime. I mean, just look it up and like, just listen to the sound. After the gang of slime, I found myself on top of a weird looking structure, which ended up being an end fortress. What was cool about this fortress is it had these Baymax looking dudes roaming around here. While exploring it, I found a room with some shulker chests inside, which I was hyped about because like three shulker chests are awesome. Now I don't have to farm shulkers. And the thought of them never even crossed my mind until I opened my inventory and saw that they were stacked with all sorts of crazy loot. I mean, we were talking totem avoid undying, mending on diamond pants, tons of diamonds. These chests were like as good as they come. And another one of these rooms had even more fantastic loot and trust me i will be showing everything off when i get back to base here because the total haul from this trip ends up being crazy from this place and all the end cities and the ship next cool thing i found was the skull room which kind of gave me the heebie-jeebies but it also had a really nice chest i like to look at so i guess it's basically the same way i felt about my girlfriend you know <laughs> man i sound like a dude back there man but you know what it's for comedy right i will deal with the beating from my girlfriend later everybody don't worry after the fortress i found a crashed end ship which was not only awesome but also gave me the hope to find an easy elytra even if it was like super broken they had some barrels on board but apparently end adventurers just don't believe in bringing stuff on journeys because they had absolutely nothing let's be honest this is probably why the ship is halfway in the ground instead of in the sky because well you need supplies believe it or not i stumbled upon what i believe was an end city and these slime guys were literally just stealing my gear and trying to kill me with it which made these some of the scariest mobs i've ever seen solely due to the fact that the stronger your gear is the stronger they are i made my way to the top of the tower and picked up some free shulker boxes these ones didn't have any loot but they were colored so i guess it was still pretty cool then i was in the cluster of suspect looking projectiles which after what felt like forever allowed me to reach the top of this part of the city which was bigger than the last 
last one. After looting the room, I picked up some chests just for fun. Here's a quick view of our shulker box collection. Yes, it's ridiculous, I know. And finally, an end ship was in sight, and boy, did this thing look awesome. I made sure to loot the last tower and got myself on top of the ship. The modded ships have phantom spawners, which should honestly be illegal, kind of like the way I steal this end crystal here. And you can see here another one of these slimes come and chase me into the hull of the ship, but I made sure not to attack at this time because I figured as long as I don't give him my gear, he won't be too much of a threat. But out of nowhere, another one tried to kill me, and I'm not sure if it was the first one who like just Houdinied into the same room as me or if another one was just waiting for me. Thankfully, I killed him and cleared out these shulkers and their spawners in the bottom of the ship. Fun fact, uh, water negates the levitation effect, so that's actually really helpful if you didn't know. Finally, though, I had the elytra in my possession, and needless to say, I was a happy camper. All the loot outside of the elytra was really just a bonus at this point, and we were absolutely loaded. Best part of all this mod lets you wear the elytra on top of your armor so you can fly in all your drippy gear. Alright, so right here you can see my beautiful collection of 29 shulker chests. Yes, 29. I know it's ridiculous. And the best part of it all was a lot of these were filled with loot, so it was finally time to sort everything out. During the sorting, I also learned how to disenchant, which was going to be really nice for getting really nice enchants like mending on the rest of my armor right here is some of the armor that we had gotten from this trip and i literally had so many pairs of shoes that i needed a second box just for boots which was just ridiculous the next day i did some disenchanting and enchanting to make the ultimate diamond gear now all of it was max protection had mending and unbreaking and just about anything else you could want so that end trip was beyond successful day 80 started off with some peaceful farming because i was running low in golden carrot after the farming I decided to do a little bit of mining which led to me finding a four vayner of diamonds and thanks to the insane fortune on this pickaxe I got 18 diamonds from the vein which I mean honestly I should have named this thing like a diamond printer at this point because that that is absurd then I made my way to the nether because I needed a ton of building blocks and figured netherrack would be the quickest way to do it well I mean it'd probably be quicker if I would stop sitting in lava here but that's besides the point day 81 I needed wool so I borrowed some from the village tents and I mean where would I be without these tents like I should really send them a nice thank you card for letting me take everything they've worked so hard for. After stealing from the villagers, it was time to go back to mine some more netherrack. Alright, so I know you're wondering here, what are we getting all these blocks for? Well, it's for a mob farm. And now I know one of you are thinking, well, why do you need this much building material, man? It's just a mob farm and I, I know you don't need that much netherrack and why do you have wool, bro? Like, what are you doing? And uh, yeah, fun fact, it's uh, not your normal mob farm, it's for farming endermen. So you feel kind of silly now, huh? Maybe this is a lesson to not jump to conclusions so fast. Mm. All right, but in all seriousness, though, for time's sake, I'm not going to go deep into this because nobody came here for an Enderman farm tutorial. So here are the highlights. It started off with some sketchy leaf placing. Leaves placing? No, it's it's, it's leaf placing, I think. I don't know. I'm, I play Minecraft. I'm not an English teacher. Regardless, stuff like this always scares me because I am one slip of my pinky away from falling straight into the void. This issue can also be seen in the bedroom if, uh, well, if you happen to use your pinky for certain partner activities for whatever reason the lighting was bugged this low in the end which wasn't too big of a deal just kind of confusing now the next step was putting in the carpet to confuse the enderman then came the insanely tedious process of creating the layered funnel of the build which took literal days and after an eternity of doing that it was time to put in the massive platform for the enderman to spawn on and after that it was time to get an endermite to spawn in the little box i made him i ended up naming him little perp so he could chase his dreams of being a soundcloud rapper then made sure to put a lid over him so nobody had to hear him rap about all the women that he gets the drugs that he does and all the immense amount of money that he makes and spends from his 46 followers on soundcloud after doing it for three years if you're in high school i'm sure you you know someone like that or you might be that person which is fine day 87 was spent chilling at the mob farm so i could finish off enchanting my last bits of gear before we went and tried to upgrade to netherite then the next two days were all spent in the nether mining for netherite and thank Thanks to trading, I ended up with 18 netherite scraps, which gave me a total of 20, which meant I could make 5 netherite ingots on day 90. The first thing I upgraded was my pew pew bow, followed by my sword. Then, with that new sword, I used the old blazerite ingot to enhance the fire aspect on it, so now this thing was even better. After that came both the chest plate and pants, with the very last thing being my helmet, and now we were looking shenazzy. I mean, Jeez. 
391 was really just me becoming the best drug cooker on the planet. You know, just living my best life and preparing some crazy drugs for some crazy adventuring alongside another boss fight, which is coming in the next set of days, which are days 92 through 95, which began with me deciding to clear that pirate ship. And look, these guys didn't stand a chance at this point. You can see they had some enchanted arrows and stuff, but at this point, I was just like full Super Saiyan, just obliterating them with the pew pew bow. And then I went down and just started smacking them upside the face and stole their diamonds, emeralds, and gunpowder. And at this point, I thought the ship was cleared, but I heard some disgusting illager noises coming from below the deck. And lo and behold, I found some stragglers that hadn't been introduced to my pew pew. From the pirate ship, I could see an absolutely massive sky fortress, man. And I had to check it out. This was not planned, but again, I had to do it. I was gonna do the boss. We'll have to do that after the sky fortress here. So I crash landed on one of the towers and started lighting these boys up, except while fighting, I would have died without the elytra because this dude just shot me right off. I cleared another one of the towers, and I gotta say, I thought this would have been a lot easier for how geared I was, but it, these phantom riding skeletons were actually pretty difficult. The chest loot was alright, but the main thing I really wanted was the dragon egg here, because eventually we were gonna get a dragon army. Now, that's probably gonna have to be in the next 100 days, if you guys want that. I finally made my way down in one of the towers, and holy wow, was it hard to see in here. I mean, I really felt like Helen Keller here, and oh my god, wait, that is hilarious. Okay, so in my script, I wrote, I really really felt like Helen Keller here and I spelt it like like listening like I hear you and it's hilarious because Helen Keller was not only blind but deaf oh my god I hope that was on purpose if not that's the greatest typo I've ever had but anyways as you can see I was getting passed around more than the USB in that one kid's backpack as the sun was setting I decided that I was kind of done with this place because after searching some of the rooms the insides were just a mess and honestly not super fun to clear because it, it was just so dark so while flying looking for something cool the next Next day I saw a massive spaceship in the sky and I mean this thing was massive and it was an actual spaceship like that's not me just trying to make it sound cooler no this thing is a spaceship I'll give you a full cinematic showing it off but before we do that I gotta clear this place in the very first chest I found there were diamonds and more importantly a netherite ingot and defending this place were armored wither skeletons after taking those out I stumbled into a throne room and saw an alien guy at the throne and just kind of shot him twice honestly I thought he was gonna be harder but obviously this guy's massive ship was compensating you know for something like crazy this place wouldn't be that easy though because there were fully armored wither skeletons tons of creepers diamond armored skeletons riding phantoms and what made these wither skeletons even scarier than usual was the fact that not only of course they had armor like i've said about six times here they also had iron swords and axes which hit way harder than these stone swords from the nether and i think these space pirates really enjoyed their entertainment because all their troops were defending what looked to be be like a talent show stage like i must have interrupted something here right here see this is what i'm talking about this is terrifying full netherite ranged wither skeleton his arrows put the wither effect on you like this is something that like you see in nightmares and then there's this derpy guy Clearing the rooms down here ended up being super worth it because I did find a god apple in the last chest. And in their kitchen, I was searching through their chest and I found some bombs, which really made me question what kind of food they're making here. And after that, I cleared the stairway of death. And finally, the ship was cleared and we can now enjoy this crazy cinematic view. This thing looks absolutely insane and I'm now the owner of this ship, which will make a nice little vacation house. Day 94, I wanted to find a boss, so I hopped on Derpy and set off to find the infamous Sun Chief. And eventually, I stumbled upon his village with all his cracked out followers however since i didn't want to fight at night i decided to wait till the next morning to attack and let me tell you these followers or villagers or whatever you call them they were weird however i did not have time to stare at their weirdness so i popped some pots and started attacking this guy and right away he just yeeted me back to this point i had seen two attacks a laser beam and a yeet and both terrified me every time i would get close to hit him he would just knock me back and realistically like he didn't have a ton of health but every time i'd hit him all his little henchmen would would start healing him like crazy i went up to smack him again but he used some crazy like energy ball move that like i honestly thought was gonna kill me for a second so after that i re-upped on the strength pot and finally just decided to go all in and try and kill him once and for all and i did it sure i was eating a massive laser beam straight to the face but you know what fat man is dead and honestly bro he was so fat he was probably eating all his his villagers so if i didn't kill them all they probably would have been half i found two masks in my inventory that gave me special effects and then i noticed i had the sun god's mask which let me 
do this. Yes, I can now eat people and they will fight for me to the very end and not ask any questions. Awesome, I know. I decided to try and collect all the different types of masks for both their effects and my trophy room because I thought it looked awesome to have them all on pedestals. Killing the Sun God completed a quest which gave me a wandering bag that contained the hammer from the far lands. This thing hit pretty hard and even spawns evoker fangs when you hit an enemy which was just awesome. And another cool bonus was the fact that you could use it as a pickaxe. Now I don't know why you would ever use it as a pickaxe. Days 96 through 99 were all spent improving the house which started with the trophy room here. I timed all these masks to spin at the same time and on the other side of the room I had trophy from all of our past adventures. There's the Rot Knight's helmet and axe, the Warden's horn and music disc, an end crystal, and the brand new fancy hammer. Then the final project was putting in the remaining light for the house, which was all gonna be glowstone. Ah, <sighs> now it's finally day 100 and it's time to just admire the base we built here. The outside looks amazing. Then you got this beautiful storage room followed by our auto smelting room that I admittedly barely used. After that, you take a trip upstairs to the trophy room where you, we have all of our cool and rare items that we obtained in these hundred days and of course lastly you have our nice little enchanting room and oh yeah this blank room but we don't gotta talk about that one but yeah that's my hundred days survived in the hardcore better minecraft mod pack if you enjoyed this video be sure you are subscribed to the channel and of course like the video you aren't gonna want to miss future uploads and as always i do want to say thank you to my beautiful patreon supporters and everyone that is still here watching to this point because these take forever to make and knowing that people watch them to the end this makes me super happy thanks again everyone i will see you in the next one and like always just stay safe out there man it's it's crazy times we live in so i'll see you later